Now let's formally practice another few estimating thirds. So this is what a third is. Um, let me briefly explain it. Let's write down the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Which of these numbers are perfect squares? Remember what I said. What is a perfect square? It's a number. Let's say that number represents the number of eggs I have. That I can place these eggs in a perfect square. Okay, one on its own is a perfect square. Then four, I could two, put two, two, and nine, I could put as three by three. Okay, those were my perfect squares. Now, what that means is that if I take the square root of these numbers, okay, the square root of 1, I can get the side length of my square that I made is 1. The square root of 4 gives me the side length of that square I made which is 2. The square root of 9 gives me the side length of that square I made which gave me 3. I'm sure you guys understand that now quite well. The problem comes in now when I want to take the square the square roots of other numbers for example the square root of 2 the square root of 3 the square root of 5 6 7 and 8 I know that this answer the square root of 2 must be somewhere between 2 1 and 2 in other words if I take two items and I want to make a perfect square with it okay so here's my two items let's use it as a block and I want to make a perfect square just using those two squares then I'll have to take my first square and a little bit, let's half it of my second square so half of the square here and half of the square there then I see, oh I still have this gap open here Okay, which means I'm going to have to cut off a little bit more here so that I can use it here and I'm going to have to cut off a little bit there so that I can all so use it there so I see this was one unit long plus a portion of my other square but that I think you guys are getting there okay so if I take the square root of two I know that that means I'm going to be somewhere between one and two the same with the square root of three I'm going to be somewhere between one and two the square root of five will this time be somewhere between 2 and 3. Same with 6, same with 7, same with 8. These, All these numbers, if we go put them in a calculator, will get an answer of 2, comma, something, something, something. Bigger than 2, but smaller than 3. Okay, well, let's test that. Okay, let's take the, let's clear the screen. Let's take the square root of 7, for example. So 7, the square root of 7 is therefore 2, 6, 4. Do you see? It's 2, 6, 4, and it goes on forever. Do you once again notice that it's an irrational number? Now, these numbers that do not have perfect square answers, perfect answers, are called thirds. S U, let me write it down. Thirds. Okay, they are irrational roots. Irrational roots. When I work out the root of something, it doesn't just have to be a square root, it can also be a cube root. So let's just do a few examples of those. So let me say that my question might be find the integers between let me state my question better. Determine between 
which two integers the square root of 20 will be okay the square root of 20 now remember when I have 16 eggs I could make a perfect square 4 times 4 and when I have 25 I can make another perfect square 5 by 5 but 20 is somewhere in between these two which means if I only had 20 eggs the perfect square I'd be able to make would have a side length that is less than 4 sorry greater than 4 so the square root of 20 will be greater than 4 but it will be less than 5 so let me quickly just explain the whole process that I did the first thing I did was to find the perfect square smaller than the number inside the f inside the square root the perfect square that's smaller than 20 what was that? 16 then I had to find the perfect square that was bigger the first one that's bigger than 20 that was 25 and then I simply took the square root of everything the square root of 16 the square root of 20 and the square root of 25 which gave me an answer of 4 this is what I want to estimate so I don't want an answer for that one and 5 so let's just check whether we've done it right okay is it true that if I take this 20 the square root thereof I get 4 comma 4 I do get an answer that is bigger than 4 but smaller than 5 shall we do another example and this time I'll do for you nice clear steps that I want you guys to follow let's ask to estimate it's another way it can be asked estimate between which two integers guys I'm sorry I'm right in cursive but um, it makes it much easier for me to use the computer estimate between which two integers the third square root of ah let's take um, what number 30 40 let's take 45 the number 45 between which two integers will the number uh, sorry between the line Okay, let's see. So the first step is to write down your 45. Now, let's find the first perfect square that is either bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter, but the first one that's smaller than 45. Let's say 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, let's try 6 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Hmm, 36 six is still smaller than 45. 6 times 6, we've tried 6, let's try 7. 7 times 7, 49. Aha! Uh -huh. So, I tried 6 times 6 and 7 times 7. I got 36. And I got 7 times 7 is the next one, 49. So, 45 lies between the perfect squares 36 and 39. Now, in my next step, all I do is take the square root of every element in this expression and I get that here I get the square root of 36 is 6 is smaller than the square root of 45 is smaller than uh, 7 the square root of 49 is 7 okay now as you can see I actually already had that answer but I do ask you please complete the steps because you're not just learning how to find an answer but how to communicate using mathematics, how to follow 
and not just follow steps, but write down steps in a way that seems rational and is and uh, it, and people that are able to read. Okay, I'll do for you one more without the question. I'm just going to write down what I wanted to serve. Okay, let's find between which two integers does the number. Let's go for 80. 80. Between which two integers does 80, the square root of 80 lie? Well, there we get 80. Okay, and we're going to find the perfect square smaller. Okay, so last time we were at 7 times 7. Let's try 8. 8 times 8 is 64. Let's try, that's still less than 80. 9 times 9 is 81. Oh, look at that, I immediately got it. So, 64 is smaller than 80, 9 times 9 is 81, that's bigger than 80. Okay, which means if I take the square root of all of them, then I get what I wanted, the square root of 80. The square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 80 is 80, ah, sorry, the square root of 80 is what I want, and the square root of 81 is 9. You get it? So the square root of 18 is bigger than 8 but smaller than 9. Now look at this. Very interesting. This 80 is very close to 81. And that is going to make me think that the square root of 18 will be very close to 9. Okay, let's try that. 80 the square root there of 8 comma 9. Do you see? It is bigger than 8. And it is smaller than 9. And it is actually very close to 9. Just like 80 is very close to 81. So not just can you estimate between which two integers they are, but you can even estimate to which integer will he be the closest. Okay, the square root of 80 will definitely be closer to 9 because 80 is quite close to 81. You guys get it? Okay, now for your homework.